Hey everybody, what's going on? JB here with another Network Knowledge Quickie. Today I want to talk about subnetting. And as most of you know, especially if you're new to IT, it's a topic that a lot of people have a lot of challenges with. It's very confusing. There's a hundred different methods out there trying to teach you how to do it. I'm hoping that I'll be able to share something that might be able to break it down a little bit and maybe make something click for you in your mind. So before we hop into that, uh, if this is your first time on the channel, make sure you hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell down below. Um, and as always, for the folks who've been watching the previous videos, we're going to do our network knowledge, brain gains question of the day first before we hop into the content, and then we'll go from there. All right, the question of the day is, which routing protocol is most often used for exchanging external routes with your ISP? You have A, OSPF, B, BGP, C, ISIS, D, VTP. So take a second, throw your answer down below uh, in the comment section, and before we wrap up the video, we'll cover what the answer of this question is. There was uh, a lot of discussion on Twitter about subnetting and uh, a whole bunch of different people making the comment that it was really, really hard to understand and kind of nail down the, the best way to figure out how it all works. And I completely understand that. The first time that I tried to learn subnetting was when I was in the Air Force doing technical training. We spent probably two weeks uh, in class learning it or I should say attempting to learn it, it really didn't make any sense. And it probably wasn't until about two or three years later where through the right combination of in-person sessions with some uh, senior level engineers and reading the right books and doing enough practicing both on paper and uh, in configuring devices where things kind of started to come together and solidify for me. So I put together this, this diagram, I call it visualizing subnets as buckets, um, as a way of describing how visualizing it kind of as pieces that fit together like a puzzle or like Tetris um, really helped me understand how subnetting works and how they the different subnets kind of um, fall within groups of larger subnets and how smaller subnets can make up larger subnets. So the thing that really clicked for me from the beginning was understanding that each type of subnet is made up of smaller subnets and they all kind of fit together like a puzzle. And they have to align on the proper uh, subnet boundaries. So the address assignments or, or these boundaries of these solar subnets um, are always the same and they can't change. So for instance, if we're looking at the slash 26s here, right, we'll see that two slash 26s fall into the same space as the slash 25 above it, right? I can't take this slash 26 and this slash 26 and put them together to equal a slash 25 because they bridge two different slash 25 networks above it. So learning where these boundaries are is really the uh, very foundational and, and critical thing to learning how to do all of this. Um, it's also really important to remember that the first IP address of a network is always the network address and the last is always a broadcast address. These are not usable IP addresses. You can't use them at all. So when you're uh, picking IP addresses for hosts within your network, you have to always find something in between those two IP addresses. And so we can kind of look at that here and visualize that a little bit better. So for instance, with the, the top slash 24, we see that the network address is dot zero and the broadcast address is 255. And really that leaves us one through 254 as usable IP space within that subnet. And the same thing continues to 
extrapolate as you go further and further down into the smaller subnets. Again, with this slash 25, it starts on 128 um, as a network address. It ends on 255, which means that both 128 and 255 is not usable space that you can use for hosts. So you're left with this uh, 129 through 254. So with that usable IP range, um, you normally end up taking one of those IP addresses and assigning it to your gateway. Um, your gateway is going to be the device that actually does the routing for uh, traffic uh, within that subnet to be able to send traffic from that subnet to other networks. Um, and then once you take away that additional IP address, then normally the rest is to be used for you know whatever other devices you want to connect on the network. So for instance, if we start with uh, this 192.168.1.0, the slash 24, um, as I said, the, the 0 and the 255 can't be used because of the network and broadcast address. Um, let's say that I had an environment or a network where I really needed to break things up a bit more than just putting everything into this slash 24. I wanted to segment things a little bit. Like let's say I wanted to make... Um, you know, a uh, subnet for my workstations, and I wanted to make a subnet for my servers. Um, we could take that and we could break it down into two slash 25 networks that fit within that slash 24. So if we take a step down and we see here, right, we're able to take that slash 24 and make it into two slash 25s. And I see we have it over here. Two 25s makes one 24. And each of those slash 25s has 128. IP addresses, and again, if we take out the network address and the broadcast address, that really means that each slash 25 has 126 usable IP addresses. The other thing that kind of helped make things click for me uh, when looking at this is that when we're going from uh, subnets, we're going from subnet ranges and we're going uh, further to the right so that the, the numbers are getting larger, right? Um, because in IPv4 addressing with subnets, you're really gonna go from uh, slash zero all the way to 32. And the further to the right you go, the, thir the further that you go towards the slash 32, the smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller those subnets then become. Um, as you see, I mean, even from here within this diagram, we see the slash 24 has 256 IPs, a slash 25 has 128 IPs, a slash 26 has 64. You can kind of see how those are getting smaller and smaller and smaller, although you're getting more and more of those smaller subnets, right? So in that case, a slash 26, two slash 26s make up one slash 25, or four slash 26s make up one 24. So the further to the right you get, the more they... Uh, become and kind of fit together to make uh, the larger subnets. So as I was saying, as, we, as we're moving uh, and going to the right, so the, the numbers, the subnets are getting larger, slash 24 to a slash 25 to a slash 26. Um, really what you're doing is you're doubling your initial number of networks that you have, but you're having the number of IP addresses that reside within those networks. So that was what I was kind of explaining with going from a slash 25 to a slash 26. We're going from two, two available subnets within the overall slash 24 to now doubling that, right? We're going from two to four. However, the amount of usable IPs within each of those four networks is now half of what it was when we were in the slash 25. And this works vice versa. So we're talking about uh, going to, to the right and it becoming smaller. Same thing happens when you move to left, going from, let's say, a slash 28 up to a slash 27 and then up to a slash 26. Well, you're starting with a slash 28, you have much more slash 28s that fall into uh, an overall uh, slash 24. 
Um, but the amount of IP space in each of those slash 28s is very small, right? So you see that 16 slash 28s make up one slash 24. When we move from a slash 28 to a slash 27, now we're only talking about eight slash 27s making up one slash 24, but you double the amount of usable IP space within each of those slash 27s. So as you work through these and you kind of become more familiar, um, it's really important to understand where these boundaries are um, for each of these networks. And it's, it's laid out here in the diagram. So memorizing where the, those network and broadcast addresses are, understanding how those smaller subnets fit within the larger subnets, and how the larger subnet can be broken into smaller subnets um, is really the thing that's gonna make it so everything will kind of come together and coalesce and things will start to make sense. So it's really all about the memorization of the block sizes um, and then dividing or multiplying those by two when moving your subnet size, either you know up or down and remembering the first and last IP addresses of the subnets and the fact that those can't be used for usable IPs. So this is kind of my, my take on how to help understand subnetting. Um, this wasn't like a, a really in-depth, you know, five hour lecture on learning how to subnet. It's more just something that might help um, make something click in your mind. And hopefully the, the diagram will help you visualize things and make things a little bit easier to understand. So uh, please leave any comments down below. I'm happy to answer any questions or go further into, you know, any of the, the specifics um, behind the diagram and, and subnetting in general. So before we wrap it up, let's go back and hit up our uh, brain gains question of the day and find out what the answer is. And then we'll, we'll wrap up the video. All right, so if we remember our question, which routing protocol is most often used for exchanging external routes with your ISP? Hope you wrote your answers in the comment section down below. And the answer is B, BGP. So the border gateway protocol is a routing protocol that is most often used um, across the internet. Service providers use it. Um, and normally if you have a, uh, medium to large size organization with internet connectivity and you have different routes, uh, that you need advertised out to the internet, BGP is going to be what you're going to use to share those routes with your ISP. All right. Well, I hope, uh, that subnetting information was, uh, useful. Um, again, leave a comment down below on, uh, some other things that you want me to cover in the future. Uh, make sure you hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell. Um, go get at it, and we'll talk soon. All right.